Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Capital City News. I'm your host, Yusuf Mong, and this is your best way to stay informed and engaged with Salt City government. On this week's episode, we're taking a look at pedestrian bridges, firefighter recruitment, and something interesting about Salt City's past. But first, wind, and why it's terrible. No, just kidding. Actually, it's gonna be our look backs, our look aheads, and our legislative update. The council discussed a legislative action that would initiate future code amendments and improve enforcement options for unintended construction impacts on adjacent properties. The council received a briefing from the UTA about their tentative 2024 annual budget, which includes $424.5 million in operating expenses and $230.4 million in capital investment to fund the provision of safe, convenient, and reliable service and key investments in infrastructure. The council also joined Mayor Aaron Mendenhall in declaring December 1st as World AIDS Day in Salt Lake City. Voted to approve the North Point Small Area Plan, which would help guide future growth in the northwest part of Salt Lake City. Adopted the Historic Preservation Overlay Text Amendment to streamline the administration of historic districts. Received two follow-up briefings about pending applications for assistance grants for nonprofits and local businesses. To learn more, visit slc.gov slash council. Mayor Mendenhall, along with partnering entities behind Richmond Flats, convened to celebrate the completion of the 55 affordable residential units. This is the first development made possible in part by the Redevelopment Agency of Salt Lake City High Opportunity Fund, which was established to encourage the building of affordable housing in neighborhoods with good access to employment, education, transit, and amenities that would increase residents' likelihood of upward mobility. We continue again with our series as the mayor visits local businesses to look at economic development loan funds and how they're being used to build community and ensure success. Hi, so nice to meet you. I'm Jotsna. You're Jotsna. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. I'm so happy to finally meet you. Yeah, same here. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I wonder, I want to ask you about how the city has supported your work and your artistry. Mm -hmm. Salt Lake City Arts Council has been a really big support for us in multiple ways. We run two organizations. One is a nonprofit, Nitya Nitya Foundation. Uh, the nonprofit is a curator for classical Indian dance and music events in the valley. The dance company has also received support from the Salt Lake City Arts Council through this individual artist career empowerment grant that. Uh, I got last year mm -hmm. to undertake a, um, a large-scale project in the valley. Last year, we, uh, Sangam was uh, the culmination of all these efforts. We presented a string of fables from different cultures, you know, from, from India, from Greece, from the Native American tradition. And then we, uh, we uh, performed these to freshly created music by inputs from within Salt Lake City. Uh, from across culture, so it was it was actually a really um, fun project, very stressful, but also very fun. <laughs> so intersectional. I think the point that just I made about intersectionality is amazing because you don't usually get to do that within the space of traditional arts, right? So mm -hmm. it's usually yeah. reserved for folk arts. We're so happy to support. Thank you. It's yeah. it's really um, um, it's an honor and a validation of our work to consistently receive support. Chinu, Aaron. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Shada. Shada, Aaron. Varshini. Varshini. Nice to meet you. Okay, now how do we do Some people say size doesn't matter. But it does. Especially when it comes to pedestrian bridges. The 300 North Pedestrian Bridge is now finished and open. Let's take a look. The 300 North Pedestrian Bridge project over the UTA and Union Pacific Rail Lines was recently completed. The goals of the project include to improve safety for walking and bicycling, and to enhance connectivity between the west side and downtown communities, particularly to West High students. What starts most household fires? This guy. It was one time, one time, and the trauma's mostly gone. On this week's interview, we speak to Fire Captain Chad Jefferson with South Lake City Fire about recruit school and what it takes to become a firefighter for our city. South Lake City Fire Department is looking for people who are excited to be firefighters. We want people who are motivated, who can learn, 
who uh, can follow orders, people who, who want to give to their community. When people get on the fire department, it's an enjoyable job and they don't want to leave. Uh, there's a lot of reward in working as a firefighter. There's something maybe that either you already do know or you haven't learned yet, that when you're out giving of yourself for a greater cause, it's got a reward that um, regardless of the pay or the, the working conditions, um, it's something that you want to come back to and you don't want to leave. There's a huge camaraderie in the fire department. When you're working and living at one of those 14 fire stations, that is your family. This is not just a job that people show up to to collect a paycheck and go home. This is a career. This is an identity. Um, this is something that's rewarding in other ways that you may not even be aware of until you're in it. There's a lot of opportunity in the Salt Lake City Fire Department for growth. Um, we've got specialties that range from hazardous materials technician, uh, heavy rescue, which is uh, you know trench rescue, high angle rescue, um, confined space, those sorts of things. Uh, swift water rescue, we've got the airport that I spoke about that has ARF rescue. Um, if, you, if you have an inkling for law enforcement, um, we do investigations. And so we have a whole division that is dedicated to fire investigation and inspections. Um, also community outreach is a part of our fire department. There's a lot of different things that you can do within this department to, to uh, further your, your personal need for growth. Um, if you want to be a firefighter on an engine or a truck for your career, that's great. But if you want to develop yourself into something more, there's room for growth. We have a great training facility and great training staff in this camp uh, that, we, that we put on. It's a 15-week camp that's very intensive. The method that we train is very rigorous and intense. Um, there's a, there's a, the people that, that come here when they leave, it's one of the best experiences after they're out of it that they can they can remember many people come out of here with a great feeling of accomplishment it's not an easy thing to do but when you're done you're you're well trained you're ready to go to work um, after you get out of recruit school you'll be on a, an apprentice for a couple for two years after that you're a journey level firefighter and this um, along with this you have monthly tests and drills and studies that are required and there's a whole division that that's their dedication is that's the training division is it, and they are making sure that everybody meets that that level of training. Salt Lake City Fire Department are looking for people who are excited to become firefighters. We're looking for good people, people that have a, a strong heart and a good heart. People that want to give out to their communities and be a part of something larger than themselves. If you think you might fit that, um, go to the website and there's a very comprehensive guide about what's expected of you and what, what you would be looking forward to to become a part of this department. How long does it take someone to make history? Probably a lifetime. How long does it take for you to learn about them making that history? About a minute? The Capitol Theater has been a fixture in Salt Lake City since it opened in 1913. Originally part of the Orpheum Theater chain, its design was modern and was used as a vaudeville theater, but motion pictures quickly changed the market. In the 1920s, it was renovated to show movies and did so for many years. For a theater at the time, it was incredibly safe from fire, boasting 30 exits, asbestos curtains, and fire sprinklers. But that didn't stop fires from happening. On July 4, 1949, a fire broke out in the basement of the theater. 600 patrons watching a Rita Hayworth double feature were whisked safely from the theater, while the assistant manager sent a pair of ushers, Herbert Schoenhart and 17-year-old Richard Duffin, to the basement to investigate the fire. They carried fire extinguishers and tried to put out the flames. Schoenhart went back up to report to the manager while Duffin stayed behind to fight the flames. While he was there, a pair of oxygen tanks in the basement exploded, trapping Duffin in the basement and making him the only casualty of the fire. Over the years, the Capitol Theater has become the home of live theater and ballet performances, but some claim the ghost of young Dickie Duffin still haunts the theater, unplugging extension cords, flickering lights, and slamming doors. That's it for another episode of Capital City News. Remember the best way to stay engaged is to stay informed. You can do that by following us on social media at SLCGov, tuning into Channel 17, or subscribing to us on YouTube. Reporting in from downtown Salt Lake City, I'm Yusuf Long.